So all we need to do is look at the data and looking at data is really important. We know that 697,000 deaths in the US occurred in 2020 related to heart disease. We know that that's one in five deaths. Heart disease costs $229 billion. And we saw that in 2017 and 2018. The other thing we know is that coronary artery disease is the most common type of heart disease. And 20.1 million people aged 20 and older were diagnosed with coronary artery disease and contribute to those overall statistics for heart disease. We know that the contributing factors for heart disease are an elevated blood pressure, an elevated blood cholesterol level, and smoking. Those are the most significant contributing factors. Additionally, though, diabetes, being overweight or obese, having an inactive lifestyle and a poor diet also contribute to heart disease. And recently, the American Heart Association has added sleep and environmental factors as contributing more to heart disease. We know that many people don't even know they have heart disease until they show up in the emergency department complaining of chest pain. At that point, the diagnosis and the treatment to get to heart disease become much more invasive and much more expensive because nobody wants to take the chance that your chest pain is not from heart disease. And so those tests really contribute to those numbers I talked about earlier, but they are necessary so that we don't have people undiagnosed with heart disease. So we know what we've talked about so far is really about treatment of individuals. It's really important in healthcare today to begin to look at groups of individuals, which brings us into the area of population health. If we look at groups of individuals, we start to think about race, ethnicity, gender, where people are located, their zip codes. And then we can start looking at the kinds of things that we might be able to change with a group of individuals in order to decrease the chances of heart disease occurring in those individuals. And so the technology that we have today that is changing and that is improving, things like artificial intelligence, really is important when we start to look at populations because we can take data and information that we get from the scanning that these tests can do and really look at what are the factors and what are the things in a population we can change. The standard of care has failed us in the diagnosis and prevention of heart disease. Using current modalities, most tests do not become positive until the patient has advanced disease this is a point where they may or may not become symptomatic, but certainly a point where they are at significantly increased risk for a coronary event, such as a heart attack or even a cardiac death. With artificial intelligence augmented CT imaging, which is currently the newest modality available, we can identify heart disease at the earliest stages. The advantage of identifying heart disease at the earliest stage is that it's most susceptible at that point to medical therapy. Medical therapy can be as simple as a statin, which can be as cheap as $10 a month. And if the statin's not effective, there are also now at least 10 different other medications which have been proven to both stop the progression of plaque and maybe uh, reduce it or convert the plaque, the risky type of plaque, into calcified plaque, which is less risky. So it really both enables the patient and the provider with multiple options, and it precisely defines, defines the type of therapy that is given to an individual based on the, their phenotypic expression of their disease. That is, the exact amount of plaque they have and the type of plaque they have. So we really are moving a long way from where we were just a few short years ago, where we waited for people to develop symptoms with advanced disease, now we can identify early disease and precisely tailor therapy in an effective way to reduce that individual's risk of future cardiac events. So currently there has been a transformation from an old approach of managing or evaluating patients with CAD. Coronary CT, along with AI algorithms, actually has become a mainstream approach, which has been recommended in the newer updated guidelines. 
So a lot of patients are undergoing this technique to accurately diagnose patients with coronary atherosclerosis and stenosis and utilizing it for appropriate management strategies. So important aspect of uh, this approach has been to accurately define not only the severity of stenosis, but also the functional significance if these patients need uh, coronary interventions either by stent approach or by surgical approach. Therefore, the number of patients who are undergoing invasive procedures are appropriate. In fact, the number of patients undergoing this invasive procedures may be less than usual uh, because we are able to define patients who have who really need the procedure. However, uh, when they undergo the procedure, the likelihood of they undergoing an intervention becomes very high. And therefore, the interventionalist is able to plan the procedure upfront to reduce the radiation and the use of contrast to these patients. So the net result is appropriate procedures, reduced risk to the patients, reduced radiation and reduced contrast. We are seeing increasing utilization of this technology in day-to-day -day practice. And actually, uh, it is also reducing ER visits as well as more accurate because the patients know what they are dealing with. So a lot of times, instead of getting more nebulous answer to their symptoms, we are accurately defining the disease. So I think overall, it's a win-win for the patients, for the clinicians, and uh, the people who are doing interventional procedures.